What's up, guys? We're students from National Tsinghua University in Taiwan. Today, we want to let you meet a cutting-edge technology called MRAN, Magnetic Random Access Memory, and it's our airline. First, I will let you let you know a little background. In last 15 years, our technology is growing fast. From the first IC and first computer to today's, the devices are becoming smaller, faster, and more portable. But eventually, they will come from bad on ink in efficiency and size. Now, MRAM becomes the promising solution to breakthrough. You might know, for memory devices, most data store in binary format. Numbers consist of zeros and ones. Take less, less six bits for example. Each, num each number stands for different order of best two. Then we sum all up to know this device equals 13. You might ask, why don't we just use decimal numbers? Because there's a device called transistor in IC. It controls current to flow through or not, respectively for one or zero. Different from current in MRAN, it utilizes the spin of electrons. Naturally, electrons are spinning and generating magnetic moments in direction either up or down like tiny magnet. We can easily denote one direction as zero, the other is one. While the truly binary function of membrane is determined by MR value, magneto resistance, which we will introduce this later. Second, to make you know the importance of brand, let's take a look. For instance, to solve this simple question, first we do the multiply and the resources we store in, M in, in, in RAM. Then we do the addition in CPU. Then store the final result 7 to the ROM as long-lasting information. Let's take a closer look in RAM, ROM. Like these unusual devices, they all share properties of low speed, non-volatile, low power consumption, and high endurance. Endurance means how many times that it can be operated as for RAM, as for RAM, most used ones are static SRAM and DRAM. They are fast, volatile, but high power consumption and low endurance because they need to keep charging to refreshing information. So the most important thing is volatility. Have you ever encountered a condition that when you are typing? Doing an assignment, just before finishing it, your laptop just ran out of battery, which means all the effort you did without saving is missing. These results from the RAM we're using nowadays are most volatile. The solution comes to a non-volatile device. So, we are finding a device that combines advantage of ROM and RAM, non-volatile, fast and low power consumption. Then, we got the MRAM. Here are some comparison results between MRAN and modern RAM devices. MRAN is the optimized one with appealing property of um, non-volatile, fast and durable, and low power consumption. Before we dive into MRAN, there are something important we should talk about. That is magneto resistance. Do you remember we have mentioned before that data are stored in 1 and 0, but how do we know it is 0 or 1? We can make use of the idea of higher and lower resistance. There are lots of mechanisms that can produce higher and lower resistance. Here we just mentioned two common kinds. The first one is called giant magneto resistance and let's call it GMR. GMR was discovered first in multi-layer consisting of ferromagnetic layer, then a non-magnetic layer, ferromagnetic layer, and non-magnetic layer. And what is ferromagnetic layer? It means that this layer had mag magnetization. You can imagine it's just like an iron magnet. It has magnetization. When electron goes into FM, if their spin have the same direction, they can safely pass a layer. 
they fly oppose each other, the electron will be scattered, so we will collect zero current at the other end. Therefore, we can measure the larger resistance. But this has some drawbacks. They acquire large field to change resistance, and they are not sensitive to magnetization field. So, scientists develop a better structure to solve the problem. Does this spin valve? It only consists of four layers, and the first three layers are the same as before. At the bottom, we add the additional layer. It is called anti-ferromagnetic layers. This layer will lock the magnetization of the second and a second ferromagnetic layer, so it won't change unintentionally. This structure is much easier to fabricate, and also get better performance than the original structure. And besides, we finish the GMR, and the other resistant is tunnel magneto resistant. Just like its name, it makes use of the tunneling current we learn in quantum physics. When the magnetization is parallel to each other, the electron will tunnel through the barrier layer. But when the magnetization is anti-parallel, the electron will not tunnel through, so the resistance we get will be much more higher. Here we have some comparison for GMR and TMR. And overall, TMR show a better performance than GMR. Here, I'm going to have an introduction to the STTMT JSA. In order to store a large number of digital information in an MRAN device, a lot of memory cell will be manufactured and be arranged as an array. Here I'm showing STTMTJ cell array. You can see each cell is constructed by a transistor and a MTJ. What is MTJ? MTJ is the abbreviation for a magnetic tunneling junction. It consists of two ferromagnetic layers such as cobalt and boron crystal at the top and bottom, and an insulator such as a magnesium oxide in the middle, which act as a tunneling barrier. And STD is an abbreviation for a spin torque transfer. It is an important writing mechanism for MRAN application. We will have an introduction to it later. For STD writing type of MTJ, it's a two terminals device. The picture shows here is called 1T1J structure, where T is for transistor and J is for magnetic tunneling junction. Moreover, there is and another type of writing mechanism called SOT. We will also discuss it later. You can see the cell structure is different from the previous one. It, it is a three terminal device. Let's come back to STTMTJ cell. The magnetic property of two ferromagnetic layers are different. The direction of magnetic moment of the top layer can be easily changed by spin torque transfer. We call it free layer. However, the bottom one cannot. We call it pin layer. By such a design, we can create two different states, anti-parallel state and parallel state. The next question is, how can we recognize these two different states by electrical way? The answer is, we drive a sensing current and take advantage of TMR effect, which we have introduced previously. By measuring the resistance of the junction, we can determine the state of MTJ. 
If the resistance is low, we define it as a state zero. After STD switching, the resistance is high, we define it as a state one. Finally, we use sense amplifier to convert the signal which we got from NTJ and provide the voltage high and voltage low output signal. Okay, so I will talk about writing in MRAM. So let's start with what is writing first. Writing in any memory is simply means changing the uh, bit information from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0. So in MRAM we can do it either using field or using current but the uh, writing using field is not desirable for practical purposes so we use current induced writing in MRAMs. And so there are two different techniques to explain uh, current induced writing in MRAM they are spin transfer torque or STT and the second one is spin orbit torque or SOT STT effect utilizes the spin dependent scattering of electron to transfer the momentum and to change the uh, magnetization state of the ferromagnet and SOT utilizes the spin hall effect in the heavy metal with a strong spin orbit coupling. So let's go into details. The, so this is the working of STT MRAM. The picture on the left hand side is the uh, complete picture of an MRAM device. And this is the main heart of the our MRAM, which is also known as MTG or magnetic tunnel junction. So if we use uh, STT technique to write, we pass the current through the magnetic tunnel junction uh, either either from free layer to towards pin layer or pin layer towards free layer. So if the magnetization states as shown in this picture are initially in anti-parallel state, then we pass the current uh, from pin layer to free layer. So this anti uh, this ferromagnet has one kind of majority spin. So it will allow it will allow those kind of spin to tunnel through the this oxide barrier. And after tunneling through the oxide barrier, those electron will transfer their momentum and will rotate their spin in this direction. And in this way, we can get um, the configuration from anti-parallel to parallel. And similarly, if we want to achieve the configuration from uh, parallel to anti-parallel, as shown in this figure, we pass the current through free layer. So the free layer will uh, let the majority electron pass and the minority electron will reflect back from the interface of this pin layer. And when they reflect back, they the reflect back minority electrons will transfer their momentum to this magnetization of free layer and will rotate the magnetization to down. So in this way, we can achieve this uh, anti-parallel configuration from parallel configuration. So uh, in the so uh, in in this STT one or zero state depend on the how we you use the electron flow or the current. And here is the small animation to show this effect. So the electron uh, will pass and then one kind of electron will reflect back and other kind of electron will turn on through and rotate the magnetization. And then there are several limitation of STT which include read current disturbance. So as we can see that here is the write current and here is the read current to sense the magnetization state of the uh, MRAM. So read and write current in STT are parallel to each other and there are chances that they, they uh, 
pro produce some kind of read current disturbance second is slow writing speed because the current has to pass through this oxide layer before doing any change in magnetization state so the speed is lower third is possibility of oxide breakdown again because we are sending the current right current which is large in magnitude compared to the read current so it can lead to the breakdown of the oxide and the mram will be destroyed and for the same reason because the current has to pass through oxide the writing current density is also higher so so a new technology is needed which is the second one which is called spin orbit torque effect and spin in in spin orbit torque effect we use a heavy metal with a strong spin orbit coupling next to the free layer of the mram so the current do not have to tunnel through the oxide layer so all those limitation mentioned are overcome in this kind of mechanism and we need an external in plane field this one to have this deterministic switching of a state from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 and then we pass the uh, we pass this charge current in in uh, heavy metal and due to a strong spin orbit coupling uh, the bulk spin hall effect will will cause this do two different kind of uh, electrons to go in different direction perpendicular to the charge current and yeah so we can see that different spins go into different direction and they will transfer their momentum to the moments of this free layer ferromagnet and thus we can achieve magnetization reversal so this is the spin orbit torque switching or writing mechanism but there is a major challenge as shown in the previous slide we need an in plane external magnetic field to have in the direction of current to achieve deterministic switching and which is uh, which uh, which is the biggest limitation of this sot scheme and currently many research work is going on to overcome it that's all for the writing part Here we come to our last part. Before we go into the summary, do you remember this video? When the battery is suddenly off, conventional one lost all its memory, while MRAN able to keep all the information. This is because MRAN uses magnetization for memory. Magnetization can last forever unless we use current or external field to change it. This way is so-called writing. For capacitance, as time goes by, leakage will occur, so we need to continue supply the power. However, it is not the case in MRAN, so MRAN is a non-volatile memory device, and this is also the most important characteristic of MRAN. And let's start our summary part. First, we start from the binary system, and then we go to the spin direction difference. We can have the resistance difference. And then we go to the MTJ structure, and then we talk about how to read and write in MRAN. And we also explain the mechanism of STT and SLT. And for the future potential application, MRAN has bigger memory for loading models. Traditionally, in case of biology characteristic, we need a chip for fingerprint, voice, gesture, and face recognition. But now, MRAN-based conventional neural network accelerator features a multitask performance in one chip, enables all this function into a single chip, make the chip become more and more powerful. However, there are still some challenges according to cost and process, but we believe it can be solved in the near future. And this is the end of our presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave your comments below. And if you like this, video, please press the like button and share this video to all of your friends.